Greetings and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized low budget science channel. Do not click like, do not subscribe. Okay, today we're going to take a look at topic 7.2 nuclear reactions. This is the second lesson, and uh, I should really, if I remember to, post a card up in this area so you can see the first lesson. Uh, but you can find it if you need to, if I forget, which I probably will. Okay. Uh, moving on, here's another GIF of a nuclear nuclear test from Nevada in the 1950s. Uh, the U.S. government did a whole bunch of these, and there's uh, a lot of videos and images of these nuclear tests, and uh, this is uh, absolutely terrifying. Okay, your lesson objectives for today. By the end of this lesson, uh, you will be able to describe the process of fission and fusion, including a couple of examples. And you'll also be able to solve problems involving the energy released in radioactive decay, nuclear fission, and nuclear fusion. And this, uh, this objective was present in our previous uh, lesson as well. So there you go. Okay, first we're going to take a look at fission. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to take a look at uranium-235. There it is. So what's happening here is we have the collision of a neutron with uranium-235. And this is already a large and unstable nucleus, but the addition of that neutron is going to make our new uranium isotope, uranium-236, much less stable, okay? So this then is going to um, undergo fusion almost immediately where the nucleus will split apart, okay? So we added a neutron, to uranium-235, it becomes uranium-236, much less stable. Okay, so uh, final point there, kinetic energy of the neutron and the binding energy of this interaction contribute to the instability of an already uh, very unstable nucleus. And it's going to very quickly become these products. Uh, so, our new products in this case are krypton and barium, our new elements. And we've also now released three new neutrons. And these neutrons have a load of kinetic energy. In addition to the matter that's released, uh, as you can see here, there's a bunch of energy released as well. Okay, and that is due to the mass defect being converted into energy. Uh, you don't need to remember these specific elements. You just need to remember the process. Okay, so uh, U-235 becomes U-236, and U-236 becomes two new elements, three neutrons in this particular example. Okay, here's a GIF of that process occurring. It's pretty cool. There you go. GIFs are fun. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a look here at a chain reaction. Uh, and here we see a number of isotopes that don't exactly match our previous example, but that's okay. Um, we see uh, uranium-235 breaking into a couple of products here, uh, releasing three neutrons. It's not exactly the same in every step that we see along the way. But um, what we should notice is that... Um, the number of neutrons here is going to increase dramatically, okay? So these neutrons are released. They're going to have huge kinetic energy. They're going to collide with other nuclei, which are then going to undergo fission. So the additional uranium nuclei will um, release a whole bunch of neutrons and energy. Uh, in this case, we have two, but normally you would just say we had three. Um, so the new number of neutrons and fissioning nuclei is going to increase exponentially, okay? So we're increasing the number of neutrons by uh, two or three, or uh, rather one or two, every time we undergo this fission. So that's what we um, would expect for exponential growth. Uh, so what we then get is a huge amount of energy being produced every single time. And um, some of the energy... Uh, involved in this interaction is going into the kinetic energy of the neutrons. And we'll come back to that a little bit later as well. So the product of a chain reaction, uh, if that chain reaction is not controlled, is going to be a nuclear explosion. Okay. 
end, that is not good, as you can imagine. Uh, so in topic eight, we're going to talk about how to control nuclear actions, slowing them down, and that's good. I'm stealing a Simpsons joke. I can do that. Uh, <clears throat> the quick answer here, without going over topic eight, is just to know that slowing down or reducing the number of neutrons is going to slow or stop the chain reaction entirely. Um, and so that generally involves uh, graphite control rods in a fission reactor. Okay, uh, so next we're going to look at mass defect and kinetic energy. Uh, so the amount of energy produced by a reaction can be found by multiplying the mass defect of a single reaction by the number of uranium nuclei involved in the reaction. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the energy of fission of one kilogram of uranium-235. So here's a quick example of some calculations that I threw together. So first we calculate the energy of one fission reaction uh, using mass defect. Um, and here we can see uh, our uranium-235 and our neutron. And we have here a total mass of 236.127 uh, unified mass units or atomic mass units. We kind of use the term interchangeably. Uh, and then over here we have our products, uh, barium, krypton. Uh, in this case, we have two neutrons instead of three. It's fine. Uh, and this is going to produce a mass difference, which we can calculate here. So we subtract the smaller number from the larger number, and that will give us our mass difference in terms of unified mass units. Uh, which we then multiply by this handy value in our data booklet, uh, 931.5 mega electron volts. So you might recall on topic 7.1, I said how handy this number was, and here we now see an applied example of that. And it's very handy, okay? So this then is going to give us the energy of fusion for one uranium-235 nucleus uh, for this particular reaction. Okay, and what we find is that it's about 262 mega electron volts. And mega, you will recall, is uh, 10 to the sixth power. Okay, so we're going to find the number of nuclei now in one kilogram of uranium-235. And for this part, you should um, refer back to topic three. Um, chemistry students may find this very easy. Okay, uh, first thing we do is we take the molar mass of uranium-235, and conveniently, it's right there. That is the molar mass of uranium-235. Um, you could also find a molar mass from a periodic table, as you see here. Uh, you just take the atomic mass number in the periodic table, and you use that for your molar mass. You just attach this unit, uh, grams per mole. Um, note that grams per mole is typically... Uh, the unit for molar mass. So that's a problem for physicists. Uh, it's le less of a problem for chemists, but it is a problem for us. So we need to convert that then to kilograms per mole, as I've done here. Okay, uh, we then need to find the number of moles, and this also is slightly problematic for uh, physicists, but less problematic for chemists, because in your physics data booklet, you're going to find... Oops, I uh, need to back up. Uh, in your data booklet, you're going to find this formula, n is equal to n divided by n sub a, which is not at all confusing, and you should definitely, definitely, as I say, often be very familiar with um, what these variables stand for in your data booklet, okay? Um, in this case, number of moles is the small n. The large n would be the number of particles. Avogadro's number is given here. Okay, um, so we'll come back to this in a second. Uh, this is the formula that we need. And again, chemistry students, you're going to know all about this. Physics students, maybe, maybe not. Problematically, this is not in the data booklet. Um, but because you're a good physics student, you would be able to find it through dimensional analysis of this unit. That's right. Okay, uh, so... Number of moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. So we take our mass, one kilogram, divided by the molar mass, and we find that we have about 4.3 moles. 
Um, I'm saving my rounding for the very end, um, as you will see. So the number of nuclei then is going to be equal to the number of moles times Avogadro's number. And look, this actually is the equation in your data booklet. Nice. Okay, so we run through our algebra and we find that we have 2.6 times 10 to the 24 nuclei. Sweet. All right, uh, once we know the energy of one decay and the number of nuclei, then uh, now we can find the total energy of the reaction. And so we multiply the number of, number of nuclei by uh, the amount of energy uh, per uh, radioactive decay or fission in this case. Uh, and then if we want to convert it to joules, and we probably do, then we use this conversion factor. Okay, and what we're going to find is that we have about 1.1 times 10 to the 14 joules per kilogram of uranium-235. Okay, um, so we could give our energy again in mega electron volts, but uh, those are very, very small and we have a very large amount of energy, so it makes more sense to use joules here. Um, also, this value is a little bit high for the actual energy released because we're going to lose some energy to kinetic energy of, of neutrons. So there you go. So this is this is a high estimate, um, but again in physics we're we're often dealing with estimates. So as long as it's in the, the ballpark, we're generally not too troubled. Okay, uh, so next we're going to take a look at nuclear fusion. Uh, here we have deuterium and tritium. Uh, fusing to become helium and a neutron with uh, quite a lot of kinetic energy compared to the helium. Okay, so nuclear fusion uh, occurs in the hearts of stars. And again, uh, we've already gone through this. Uh, so humans, we can start a fusion reaction, but we can't control the reaction. Uh, or rather, we can, but we have to put more energy into the system than we get out of the system. And that is problematic if we're trying to use fusion for energy. Uh, we can't at the moment, but research and continues, and uh, we should be optimistic because a breakthrough here uh, could be the answer to um, a lot of people's prayers in regard to uh, climate change. Um, an example, another example of fusion, uh, man-made fusion would be a nuclear reaction uh, for nuclear weapons, uh, where you have two stages uh, involving nuclear fission starting a secondary fusion reaction. So uh, a less noble purpose for fusion, certainly. Uh, if we wanted to calculate the energy release of this reaction, it would be similar to our previous example. So um, I didn't see the need to go through a boring calculation twice, but um, there you go. If you're really desperate for a fusion calculation, drop a comment and perhaps I will uh, make another video. Okay, so there we go. That's it. Nice and easy and quick. The uh, presentation took me a lot longer than the actual lecture. I can tell you that. So here are my sources. Uh, I used a bunch of Wikipedia images. It's the way. Um, also use Google Slides, Latex, etc. Again, uh, do not click like, do not subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.